What's up, math fans? Today, we're talking about line reflections. Um, I don't know if you can tell, but I can see into the screen, and everything I'm doing is being reflected like a mirror. Same thing with line reflections. It's like looking into a mirror, okay? So, take a look at my point. A. If I plot point A, which is two comma three, some people don't even know how to plot points. If you're not sure, your point is, I'm gonna do this in yellow, and I know you can't see the yellow very well, but I'm gonna save long for something else. X comma Y, okay? So two is the X, three is the Y. If you still don't know what I'm talking about, this way, the horizontal axis is the X axis and the vertical axis is the Y axis. Some people remember it by saying, um, uh, X is X is X, but Y to the sky, they kind of remember Y to the sky, so Y is going up to the sky, X got to be the other one. So when you plot a point, X goes first, then Y, kind of like the alphabet, X comes first and then Y. So if you're looking for 2 comma 3, you start at the origin, that's my little O for origin, 0 comma 0, and if I'm going to 2, 3, then I run across to 2, and then I go up to 3, 1, 2 over, and then 1, 2, 3 up. Some people say run, then jump, two, then three. Okay, so X is two, Y is three. So here's two, three. Now, two, three is a point, it's a location. And I want to go look in the mirror and reflect to the other side in the X axis. So this is my X axis. Point A looks into the X axis and should reflect onto the other side. Almost like when you're looking down into a lake or a river or a pond or some kind of body of water. So what would happen, where would 2, 3 land when it reaches the other side? Let's see, I'm going to measure it with no ruler. From here to here reaches the, uh, reaches the x-axis and then it's got to go that other side. So it's got to be somewhere right here. Actually, I said I was going to use orange for that. Gotta be somewhere right here. And if you have a graph paper, you can count the boxes. So you go one, two, three, and then one, two, three. Where are you? You're at a new point. I'm gonna call it a prime. And what are the coordinates of a prime? Well, I never left two. I was on two the whole time. Two stayed the same, but the three became negative three. That's what happens when you reflect in the x-axis. What if I was going to reflect in the y-axis, so that's the notation here. What happens to 2 comma 3 if instead of going the x-axis, I reflect it into the y-axis, what would happen? Well, I would look over here, I would go across 1, 2 this time, and then 2 more, I'd be at a double prime, and the coordinates of a double prime are negative 2 comma 3. So this time, I went to the other side giving me negative 2, but I stayed at 3. All right, simple as that. You can do it on a graph and it's very, very obvious. A lot of people don't want to waste time graphing it and they just do a general formula. Here's your formula. If you take a point, x comma y, and you reflect it in the x-axis, no matter what x comma y is, even if x comma y didn't start here, I started the positives to make it easy for you. But I could have started on the negative side and then I would just reflect over here. I could have started down here and then I would just reflect over here. So even if x is positive, negative, it doesn't matter. What happens is, when you get to a prime, what happened here with my x-axis? The two stays the same, the x stays the same, and the y became negative. So the sign for y is going to change. If it was positive, it becomes negative y. If it happened to start off as negative, it would become positive. So there's my rule for reflection in the x-axis. I never need to graph it now as long as I remember that rule. If you forget the rule, graph it. What happens if you are reflecting in the y-axis? Well, based on my example, what would a, I'll call it double prime, a double prime in the y-axis? Well, that's what happened right here. This time the two changed, so the x changed, becomes negative x, but the y stayed the same. The y stays the same. So here is a rule for reflections, real basic reflections. And that's pretty much it. I'm going to do an example just for fun, of course.
All right, but try to remember these rules. If I'm reflecting in the x-axis, the x stays the same. If I'm reflecting in the y-axis, the y stays the same. Now, here's an example of a triangle because in geometry you do more shapes than actual just points. But in order to do a shape, you've got to understand that, that shape is made up of vertices, which are points. Check this out. Every time I did a point from A to A prime, if I were to connect it, it would connect. That's really bad. I'm way off. How's that? Better? Okay, if I were to connect A to A prime, I connect it with that yellow dotted line, and that yellow dotted line is perpendicular to the x-axis. How cool is that? Not a coincidence, it's supposed to be. If I connect it this way, um, again, I cheated a little, but again, it's perpendicular this time to the y-axis. When you're reflecting, you're going straight through the line of reflection, not on a diagonal. Straight through, perpendicular. All right, let's go here. So, if I'm taking 1, 1, which is point A, and I want to reflect it in the y-axis, I go to my rule for y-axis, and A prime is going to be negative 1, 1, okay? Negative 1, 1. Oh, but Professor Noah, you said it's A double prime. I only said it was A double prime because I did A prime already. Here, since I'm starting from fresh, I can just call it A prime, which means the new A. Where's the new B? Negative 2, 3. Where's the new C? Negative 8, 2. And if you actually graph it, 1, 1 goes to negative 1, 1. 2, 3 goes to other side. Negative 2, 3. It should be over a little bit. And C, uh, 8, 2 goes to negative 8. Oh, I needed more lines here. Negative 8, 2, which is about here. And I'm going to call it C prime, B prime, and A prime. If you see, I have a reflected triangle, and that is the moral of the story. Look how great, look how straight these lines are. That's because I use a straight edge. So, don't be lazy. Get your straight edge. Make a straight, make some straight lines. Okay, and hopefully it is perfectly symmetrical. Here's another vocabulary word you need to know. If you are reflecting a shape, triangle, or any kind of shape, could be quadrilateral also, any, any shape at all, any polygon. If you're reflecting a shape, guess what? There's a connection between this and all my old videos. A, B is congruent to A prime, B prime. B, C, congruent to B prime, C prime, and A, C, congruent to A prime, C prime. When you are reflecting, the size of the shape does not change. You maintain congruence, okay? That is important, and we'll talk about that some more. Right now, moral of the story is, what are the coordinates of the new points? Remember, all right? Thanks for watching, see ya.